you're looking at the very first 3D printed building in all of Europe. My name is Jared Gross, and I'm here in Copenhagen, Denmark, the headquarters of Cobot International. While I'm here, I'll be making videos on all kinds of things related to 3D printed construction, from the buildings themselves to the printer, the setup, operation, safety features, cleanup, and more. So make sure to subscribe, that way you don't miss a beat. Today, we have the special privilege of getting a tour of this Bode building from Alma, an architect at Cobot. By the time this video comes out, I should still have another week here in Copenhagen. So if you have any questions for Alma or the team, make sure to drop them in the comments below. We are here at the Bud building, which was made in 2017. It's the first 3D printed building in Europe. It was made as a prototype project where we would like to test out different things. My name is Elma Bangsko and I'm an architect here at the Cobot International here in Copenhagen. Here at the Cobot International we build large-scale 3D construction printers. One of the you can say key features of the building was to try to do something that would be difficult to do with uh, normal construction. As you can see there are these waves on the building, both over here and on the other side over here. Um, you might also notice that on this side the wall is very clean, it's been plastered afterwards, but there are also parts of the building where we let the 3D printed texture just stand there on its own for people to see how it looks, right? The concrete itself was like the cost of the concrete was 15,000 kroners, which is equivalent to around 2,000 euros. Making the walls of this building was actually very, very cheap. But uh, what we experienced when we did this building was that then when the when the guy who came who had to do the roof, I think the, the expenses for the roof was maybe five times what it would have been uh, normally. Because as you see, this uh, wavy pattern on the wall that made it necessary to do like a very comprehensive customized roof uh, structure on top of it. Maybe we should go inside? So, this is uh, the interior side of the building. As you can see, this is uh, kind of the main room where it can hold a few uh, working people. It's a small office space out here. This had something to do with local plans for the area, what was supposed to be here. Over here, we have a small kitchen where you can yeah, make coffee or whatever you like in a small like, lounge area. And uh, similar to the outside of the building, we decided to keep parts of the 3D printed walls plastered. So this has been smoothened out <laughs> yes, afterwards. But there are also parts here where you can see the texture of the 3D printed wall. And this was, it was not only the first 3D printed building in Europe, but it was also the first 3D printed building that we made, right? So the texture is uh, sort of rough for this one, but as you can see in, in newer projects made with the Cobot 3D printers, we have different methods now for making even just the raw 3D printed walls extremely smooth here. Every single layer is just printed without any flaps or anything, right? And we had a few challenges when you go along with the material and so on. So maybe in some parts, as you see here, it's slightly over extruded. And in other parts, it's just, it's very, like the layers are very plain to each other. This building, when it was 3D printed back in 2017, the whole process of just printing the walls took around two months. But as our technology kind of improves, also for example here, as you can see with the layers, that they are they're pretty rough. What we do now is that on the nozzle of the machine, where the material is, is coming out, we have these flaps on the sides, which will smoothen out the walls a lot. We tried to 3D print this building again in 2019. The exact same wall structures. We just did it in our workshop just to see how much we had improved, right? So back in 2017, this took two months, right, of ongoing uh, printing and where you have to, you know, have some days where you have to pause and start and stop and so on. And in 2019, we printed the except same building in 28 hours. <laughs> you know, that's not the, some kind of uh, optimistic when where we take everything out, like from, from the minute we started printing, 
and until the second we were done, like with everything, changing materials underway, people going home to sleep and everything, after 28 hours, this building was printed again. So that just says something about the improvements that has been made, right? So a few years ago it took two months, now it takes 28 hours to do these walls. So maybe in a year or a few years it will be equivalently <laughs> faster. So this is just a like a room for different utilities, right? In here it's super rough, like uh, yeah, as you can see, <laughs> also in this very sharp corner in here, we have like quite a quite some excess of material, but this is just for storage and electrical uh, utilities and stuff like that. But uh, we also have a bathroom. The design was made by, by an architect called uh, Anna Guidea. Just very simple, with the same in the bathroom, and here is another, you can say, wall texture. This was all about experimenting, right? Seeing what was possible, and you know, we have the super clean walls that have been smoothened a lot, and we have the raw walls, and we also have this kind of in between where they have been plastered quite roughly. Um, yeah, and I guess the whole idea was to make something where you would get an idea of what 3D printing can do. A lot of the walls are very round and organic. We had the kind of wavy pattern going on on the outside. We go back out here. Yeah, and you know, there is yeah, kind of these round smoothing walls. And we were, I think this is quite a nice detail to where you have like the end of the wall here, and then it kind of divides into these two spaces. The way the walls are, are made is that actually it's just a hollow wall but with integrated columns where we used the 3D printer to print the formwork to cast the columns in afterwards. This was mainly for getting the, the building permitted easily because at that point in Denmark and we still don't have that, we don't have building code um, for 3D printing with, uh, with concrete, right? So in order to get the building permitted easily, we just made these integrated columns. So from a structural um, perspective, this is just a hollow wall with reinforced columns inside. This is the, the way the building has been made, right? So we have these single walls in some areas. And then we also, you can see here that it's made like a hollow wall, but with these columns all the way around. So I think there are, yeah, 11 columns in total where we, as said, used, to, we used the 3D printer to do the formwork and then we put these cage rebar inside of them and then casted, and casted them out afterwards. The building itself was uh, especially considering the rather complex uh, shapes that we have here. The building itself was relatively cheap to make, but then the roof was really expensive because it hadn't really been taken into consideration that you can make a very complex design for the walls, but then all the parts that has to be done manually will be a lot more expensive, right? Because you need to make something adapted to these complex walls. And now I have to figure out how to put this on. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next week, I'll be going to the most innovative 3D printed house in the world, and Alma's coming too. We'll be touring the house with architects from Mensa Corte and getting an idea of the progress they've made, so stay tuned. If you think this project from 2017 was cool, just wait till you see what they're doing in 2021.